Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. When Jesus washed. He washed my sins away. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Hi. My name is Fadia Jerome Smith, and I am a kidney transplant recipient. And here's my story. When I think back on my entire journey, I have to start from the moment when I thought everything was okay, everything was fine, and I was just doing, uh, I was just doing Fadia. I was just doing me. So I bring you back to my university years when I was in teacher's college and I was an RA at the time. So, like I always do for the people I love, I sing for them! I couldn't find a corny song. To, well, actually I did have a corny song, but this one is not so corny. It's just something that, I, a song that I really like from The Simpsons. And you can sing along! Okay, here it goes. I don't know all the words. I was 25 years old. I was, uh, one night I was binge watching the first 48. And as I was watching the show, I just started feeling discomfort in my back. And the, the back pain just was very, very persistent. I decided to take a couple Advil and think that I'm just gonna ride out the pain. I thought to myself, maybe I pulled a muscle. Maybe I just twisted my body uh, in a funny way and that's why I had this back pain. I pop the Advils, take a nap, I wake up from the nap and I felt worse uh, to the point where my right arm starting to feel numb. So at that point I'm thinking something is really wrong, I'm dying, there's a stroke, I need to call somebody. So I call um, I called one of my friends who lived at uh, the floor below me, and we called 911, rushed to the hospital near my campus. That's where I was told, hey, Fadi, you have really high blood pressure. Did you know you had high blood pressure? At 25, the first thought was, there's no way I have high blood pressure because that's an old people disease, right? Older people have hypertension, not 25-year-olds that play sports and are fairly active. I stayed overnight and they did um, ultrasounds. They tell me then that I have really small kidneys. I didn't even know where my kidneys were. So I just looked at them and I said, okay, no one has ever told me that. Um, as a child, the most that I had was um, asthma. So I did go to the hospital fairly often, but it were for my lungs, not for anything else uh, because I didn't show any other symptoms all the way I would say even throughout my high school years, I was battling this asthma. Two thousand and ten, um, uh, my husband and I get married, and we are pregnant for the first time. Now, I'm telling you this part because I think that's when my body—that's when I started sh showing signs that something is happening with me, and it's not because of the pregnancy. Um, hypertension again during this, this high risk pregnancy and um, because we couldn't you know wash the baby and check my kidneys at the same time um, I was assigned a nephrologist to kind of follow up with me throughout the pregnancy and unfortunately um, that was the time when we, we lost um, the pregnancy we lost the baby at the time it was probably one of the most difficult times of our lives and the kidney journey or the kidney issue definitely fell back in the back burner all the way to the back burner and did not think about it again. However, the nephrologist that I was assigned to um, at that time was very persistent, very extremely persistent. So at that time now, it's 2010, 2011, we are thinking of having another baby my nephrologist tells me okay let's get you prepared for pregnancy 
um, and um, we fall pregnant. We have uh, uh, a baby in 2012. Joyous moment, again, kidney function whoop, out the window. <laughs> we are now focusing on baby. And that's when my kidney function just plummeted. It just took a dive for the worse. My nephrologist, I wanted to say, um, became very concerned and very worried for, for my overall health and started talking to me about nutrition, uh, more specifically, like what exactly what I ate at home and was very persistent on making sure that I followed what she said to the T and make sure that I, I connected with other people like the dietitian on her team to have a, I guess, a, a holistic approach to my kidney health. 2012, 2013, 2014 goes by and my kidney function is just not getting better with um, you know, changing my diet and um, trying different, um, uh, different blood pressure medication to make sure that my, my hypertension was kind of regulated and um, she orders a biopsy, a kidney biopsy. So we do the bi biopsy and that's when I found out that I have um, FSGS. So focal segmental glomerosclerosis. A long term that I'd never heard before and scary term because I had the word sclerosis in there and um, all of a sudden Dr. Google and my nephrologist we became best friends and I was constantly trying to figure out um, where did I get this disease from, where did I get this chronic kidney disease from and how I can curve it uh, what I need to do, what I need to eat, how I need to drink, how I need to exercise and so on to make sure that I could maintain what I do have. And that's when the transplant talk started happening. Okay, Jamila, this is the original, just for you. One love. Sans voix. So at that point now, I have my sister who was the official match and um, we started the process of doing the antibody tests, um, do, she had to do a physical and so on and this was I guess part two of the family just being uneasy with the whole decision because at that time she had just given birth, 2014, she had just given birth to a little baby who was um, very premature. So this morning, Winnie and I are going to do, I guess, the second phase of testing. Ooh, emotional. There was never a moment of doubt. There was never a moment of well, let me think about it. Let me speak to my husband about it. There was like, nope, Fadia, there's no, I've made up my mind. I'm going to be your match and we're going to do this. I'm just doing this video to ask you for your prayers. Um, not to ask that, you know, like not necessarily to guard my feelings or anything, but simply that God's will be done that at the end of all of this, when everything is said and done, and uh, whether I have a kidney or don't have a kidney, that his name be glorified, and that my life and Winnie's life, um, my family's life, becomes a living testimony. My nephrologist calls me um, to say, Fadia, your kidney function, um, is not good and you have to start dialysis as soon as possible. I was already on the transplant train and now I had to change gears. I had to change transportation completely to now focus on something else. And um, like I said before, I wasn't afraid per se for the, the whole surgery or dialysis part or transplant part. So I said, okay, well, I have to start dialysis. Let me go ahead and do this dialysis thing. I sang the entire hour and a half for the, for the, the port to be installed. Um, very uncomfortable procedure, but I thought this is a small 
uh, a small sacrifice to make sure that I feel better and that I am just, you know, better for my family and better for uh, my son. The, the transplant team at UHN um, sat down with me and my sister to um, educate us on a paired exchange program. So the paired exchange program, um, if I can explain it in my own terms, is finding um, duos or finding couples of people that were technically a match but something wasn't right so they, we coupled that group or th those two individuals with another pair that have the same situation and see if we could swap. Why well, I said that this whole journey was more emotional and more spiritual than anything was the wait period. I'm not a nurse, I'm a patient. I have to explain myself often to people. I, I became very, um, just very discouraged overall by the whole process. And there were a couple of times where dialysis just did a number on me because I either drank too much water that day and the machine, the numbers didn't quite add up correctly. So um, the machine just took too much water out of my system. It was just uncomfortable. There were days where I would start crying and I, I I know people were around me, my family were around me. I would literally go and hide in my closet and cry. Fadia, you have a kidney. I'm flying to Alberta in a couple days. What's happening? So when is my phone call coming? I get the phone calls like, hey Fadia, we have a kidney, we have a match for you. Your transplant is going to happen on March um, 3rd, I believe, March 3rd. Um, get your stuff ready and so on. We have the transplant. Uh, everything is okay. The, the kidney that I received works well. And the first thing that comes out of my mouth is when can I have avocados and when can I have fried plantain because I could not have those things when I was on dialysis because they were too high uh, in potassium and fat and all of that. And my kidney before uh, transplant couldn't deal with it. So the minute that I stepped home, okay, maybe not the minute, but a few days after I got home, my mom uh, cooked me a, a nice home cooked meal, uh, beans and plantain and avocados, and I ate to my heart's desire. <laughs> if I can count how many persons of color that I saw um, throughout this entire journey, I can count it on four fingers, right? Um, there, was not, there was not a lot of representation. Um, and I kept thinking about if I wasn't vocal or if I wasn't asking questions or if I didn't, uh, I didn't have my family who ask questions as well and have a doctor that took the time to explain and re-explain and draw a diagram and whatever we needed. If, if I didn't have that support, my experience would have been completely different. And I'm always thinking about other individuals that are in the same situation that I was in and are not finding their voice. That's why I'm sharing my story. That's why I want uh, people to see me as a success story, but also um, encourage um, everyone to, to, use, to use their voices, to not be afraid to, to question and ask more questions, even though it looks like or feels like, you know, they've explained that already, but uh, I need to understand, let me ask again, ask again. Last but not least, my, my biggest thank you to the UHN, team, transplant team. Thank you to the person who donated um, their kidney um, to me. I don't know who that person is, but if you were to watch and be like, hey, I gave a kidney to a stranger once, uh, maybe it's me. Thank you. And thank you to my sister. Thank you to my husband, my parents, my mom who made me laugh all the time with her wild ideas. Um, just thank you. Thank you. And that's my story.